and gentlemen, distinguished guests, we are very happy you could join us today on this very, very special occasion for the Western Pacific Railroad Museum. I'm Todd Bruce. I'm glad to be here today, and I want to thank you for joining us on this very historic day. Um, so I'm the, I'm the Regional Director of Communications for the Red Cross Gold Country Region, uh, of which this is a part of. Uh, I have only been with the Red Cross for two months, and gosh, probably four or five days after I started, I got a call from the museum asking us to come up the next day to meet Julia and her family. Uh, and she was brought up here as a surprise uh, to get reacquainted with the Royal Car, and uh, we were able to do it, and boy, am I glad that we did. Uh, I've done a lot of reading on this project, and uh, I can tell from the amount of emails and phone calls that we've traded that the folks that are taking care of this are incredibly dedicated, and uh, it's a great, great, piece of uh, not only California history, but of the Red Cross history. And when I was driving up here today from Sacramento, I was thinking about the fact that obviously the Red Cross has been in the news a couple times in the last few weeks. Uh, that's a joke. <laughs> and it's okay, but um, in my job, I'm looking at the immediate present and the immediate future as far as all the disasters that are going on with the hurricanes and the wildfires. And what strikes me about this project is this is a chance for people who get to know it to stop and look at such an interesting piece of our past. And uh, it's great. And this is such a rich, nice story. And it's so great that all the family gets to be here and the relatives of the Sweetwoods. Sweetwoods, pardon me. Um, it's a great, great uh, day for, for such a nice event for this. So anyway, thank you for inviting us. And um, real quickly, if I could, our friends from the Red Cross in Reno have a proclamation they'd like to present. recognition. The American Red Cross of Northern Nevada honors the dedication of those who, whose work provides life-saving blood to those in need. Charles O. Sweetwood Blood Procurement Car. This car, staffed by American Red Cross medical personnel, traveled thousands of miles over 11 railroads in four states to collect and store 25,000 pints of blood. The Sweetwood pro provided a vital link for blood donors and recipients in Western states, the American Red Cross. And Maureen's going, we have the 100 year pins from Northern Nevada too that she's giving to the family. So thank you very much for your dedication. Thank you very much. We appreciate that very much. See you soon. Okay, well at this time I'm very proud to present and I'd like to now ask Mr. Bill Sweetwood to come forward and join me on the stage to honor the memory of his uncle, Charles. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Sweetwood. Well, I'm not gonna say much because I don't like being up here, but uh, Charles was born in Summerton, Arizona. He had a nickname called Cubby. And he attended school in Elko and after leaving school, he went to work for the Western Pacific Railroad. He was a uh, carman's helper, and coincidental, he worked on his car. In 47, he enlisted in the Army and advanced to the grade of 1st Sergeant Medical Corps, 1st Cavalry Division. He served in the occupation of Japan until 1949, come home, got married, and in 1950, in the spring, he was either called back or re-enlisted in the Army. His uh, division was the first to bear the brunt of the early fighting in Korea, and they conducted themselves with honors. Charles saved many under fire as a frontline medic. Charles was killed in action in Tegu, September 8, 1950, 67 years ago yesterday. He had just turned 21 years old eight days before. He was survived by his parents, his sister, and two brothers. His mother, Bonnie, and my dad, William, or Bud, they called him, and his brother, James, were the first to donate blood. His mother was the first to donate blood on his car in Oakland, California, at the dedication. It's our family's honor to be here to continue to remember the sacrifice and inspiration that Charles made, along with all the other veterans throughout the years. On this card, there was a plaque. 
that was made up in his memory. And through the years, it's went the wayside. So the family has had another plaque made up with the same wording and the likeness that was on it before. To the memory of Charles O. Swingwood, Western Pacific, the first Western Pacific employee to lose his life in the Korean campaign to fight against communism. This military blood procurement card was dedicated January 10th, 1951. So it will be dedicated to the car to take the place of the old one. We also have his purple heart that he got. And a couple of my cousins are going to put it in a shadow box. It will be donated to the car also. I mean, all of us are getting a little more this way. As we know, through times as families move on and we lose member, members, we lose things. So we figure the best place for it to be would be here with the car. Also, One of the little red blood drop pins that was given to people who gave blood. This was my grandmother's. One first one to give blood, it's going to be donated also. Anyway, so thank you for all being here and helping us with our family history. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm usually used to going off script because, well, that's kind of what I do on my radio show and everything else. So this is a little more scripted than usual, but I've got a couple of quick questions. What was it like to travel the country and it basically the first blood mobile and procurement vehicle in the United States and do what you were doing? There must have been a great sense of pride. I can't tell you how much. I appreciate it as much as the people that came to join blood. And it was a wonderful experience for me. Well, we greatly appreciate your service. And uh, I think you have a few words to say, so we'll let you enlighten us, okay? All right. <clears throat> it's my pleasure to officially rededicate this historic railroad car, the Western Pacific 106, as the Charles O. Sweetwood. May its story continue to inspire and may it serve as a memorial to those who have worked to save the lives of those fallen in the war. I would also like to remember and thank everyone who donated blood in this car and those who may do so in the future. Very nice. Well, thank you for your time and service. As you know, Portola was built by and for the Western Pacific Railroad. So this town in itself and this car uh, have such a historical uh, presence and importance. And in dedicating this car today, we, we have a special proclamation that the mayor would like to read and we would like to present to Bill on behalf of the family. Thank you. A pro proclamation of the city council at the city of Portola, California determining that September 9th is hereby now designated as Charles Owen Sweetwater Day. Sweetwood Day, I'm sorry. Whereas the city of Portola recognizes the contributions of the Western Pacific Railroad as a strong source of local heritage and pride. And whereas First Sergeant Charles Owen Sweetwood was the first Western Pacific employee to lose his life in the Korean War. And whereas Sergeant Charles Owen Sweetwood was a frontline medic who saved many soldiers through his historic efforts and was killed in the line of duty on September 8th of 1950. And whereas the Western Pacific Railroad 
recognized that there was a shortage of blood for medical units in the Korean War. And whereas the Western Pacific Railroad created a blood bank on wheels railroad car, donated to the American Red Cross and named in honor of Charles O. Sweetwood. And whereas the Charles O. Sweetwood car was in operation from 1951 to 1953, traveling over 28,488 miles and collecting over 25,000 lights of blood. Now, therefore, let it be proclaimed that we, the Portola City Council, hereby proclaim September 9th as Charles O. Sweetwood Day in the City of Portola. And by this action, let it be known that the City of Portola, California, recognize the contributions of the Western Pacific Railroad to this community and honor the, the men and women who fought and fell during the Korean War. My introduction to this car was out of a book when I was in elementary school. I went to the local library and there was a book that had railroads of the United States. And lo and behold, there's a picture of this car coming out of Reno up to the Reno uh, interchange with the Western Pacific. Fast forward to 1979 when I hired out on the WP, I find this car in Orville. Not knowing what car it was, I was educated by a fellow brakeman, I believe it was Ed Mackinson, that said, that's the Sweetwood, you know, the car that collected blood for the Korean War. So, <clears throat> that's my little introduction to this car behind the roundhouse in Orville. Then I became a member up here in 2010 it came to join with the collection. The Western Pacific was a family railroad. By the time it disappeared into the Union Pacific in 1982, generations of families had worked on the WP. In return, the Western Pacific developed a culture of looking out for and remembering its people. This car, the WP-106, would come to embody so much of what was special about the Western Pacific and its sense of family. The 106 was built by the Pullman Company in 1917. Released for service 100 years ago, it was the beer jet of its day high-class home away from home for the elite of America's business class. In 1942, it came to the WP as an executive's car based in the yard at Alcoa, Nevada. Then in 1947, it was placed under the care of a young member of one of the WP's longtime families, the Sweetwoods. Charles worked for the railroad right out of high school alongside his brother and other relatives. One of his tasks was making sure the 106 was fit for duty when needed. Soon, however, he went into the Army and began a career that would lead him to save many lives before giving his own in Korea. In late 1950, WP President Frederick Whitman returned to the office after donating blood at the bank in Oakland where his wife volunteered. She had informed him that blood banks were not getting enough donations. Reflecting on this, President Whitman called in his creative vice president of public relations, Gilbert Ness, and asked if the railroad could do anything about it. The next morning, Mr. Ness laid out an audacious proposal to use a business car as a blood bank on wheels. Nothing like that had ever been done before. With the President Whitman's blessing and promise that the Western Pacific would cover all costs associated with creating and operating the program, Mr. Ness turned his operations team, turned to his operations team for ideas on how to make it work. They then presented their plan to the American Red Cross, the flagship California Zephyr would be used to bridge the gap between the soon to be named Charles O. Sweetwood as the blood collection point into the processing lab in the Bay Area. The idea so excited the local Red Cross representatives, Mr. Ness approached 
that they began working with the WP even before the national office had given its blessing. The results lived up to the WP slogan, the willing people. The WP family came together to make this idea a reality, dedicated it to the memory of one of their own made sure your life-saving carbon kept rolling. <clears throat> On behalf of the members of the Feather River Rail Society, I now thank the men and the women of the Western Pacific Railroad for their inspiration and willingness for the efforts that helped save so many lives. Star. He's the district representative for Congressman Doug LaMaffa, and he has a proclamation to present from the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, if you would as well, Steve. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here today. The congressman gives the regards from Washington. Um, he really would have enjoyed to be here today, uh, being quite the train and history buff that he is. Um, I'd just like to say real quick that as we've heard from the speakers today, the Charles O. Sweetwood is an example of American exceptionalism. I was hoping I had a podium. <laughs> Some people said a blood bank on rails couldn't be done. A few folks at Western Pacific said, watch this and made it happen. Through, the dedication, uh, through their dedication to a cause, with the help of American Red Cross nurses like Julia Pagan and so many others, a new system of blood collection and transportation was created that saved countless lives during the Korean campaign. Even more so, we're afforded a unique opportunity today to hear first-hand accounts and memories of those who connected to the Charles O. Sweetwood. A few months back, I had the opportunity to listen to Julia recollect about her experiences serving on this rail car. Hearing her talk about the work she performed and the people she met along the way, all of us gathered around and were hanging on every word. But in her voice, you could sense the positivity of those experiences and the pride she took in her work. It was really quite moving, and for that opportunity, I thank you, Julia. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the people who make up the Feather River Rail Society. It is their dedication to the preser preservation of the Western Pacific Railroad that has afforded us the unique opportunity here today. Because of folks like Steve Havick, Eugene Bickner, and all the others, we are here, along with, uh, we are here today, along with future generations, uh, that will be able to learn about these small parts of the bigger picture of our American history. Thanks to the efforts of the people that make up the Feather River Rail Society, we will always carry the memory of Sergeant Charles Owen Sweetwood, the first employee of the Western Pacific Railroad to lose his life in the Korean campaign and the name bearer of this important piece of history. Steve, on behalf of Congressman Doug LaMaffa, the U.S. House of Representatives and the good people of the First District of California, I'd like to give you this certificate of recognition. Bill Cardoza. I'm getting your exercise today. I need it. <laughs> it's a, a real honor um, to be here with the family of Sweetwood. What a history. What a rich legacy. It's great to be here at the Railroad Museum and to be standing on the car that saved many, many lives. I have a resolution from Senator Ted Gaines. I won't read it all. It's a lot. <laughs> Resolved by Senator Ted Gaines that he congratulates the Western Pacific Railroad Museum on the centennial celebration of the Charles O. Sweetwood military blood car and commends the museum for its outstanding contributions to preserving and promoting interest in the rich ancestry, traditions, and spirit of early California history to succeeding generations. Congratulations. Thank you. Charles grew up in, of course, Elko, Nevada. And this is also where he was buried after he gave his life serving the others on the battlefield. 
Since we are unable to have representation from the City of Elko, I will present this, or Patty did, this dedication to Mr. Steve Hasback here. And of course, this is uh, on behalf of the Mayor of Elko, Nevada, Chris J. Johnson. And if you'd like, I can read the top few words off of there for you. And a proclamation by Mayor Chris J. Johnson, City of Elko, Nevada, by recognition of the uh, rededication, excuse me, rededication of this Western Pacific Military Blood Procurement Card, Charles O. Sweetwood, today, September 9th, 2017. Here we go, Steve. It's Charles Sweetwood Day. There we go. You do the Princess Die wave. Okay. 